Hey, beloved of God and of me, welcome to this video. Glad to have you with me or glad for me to be with you again. And I hope that this video will not only bless you but also feed you spiritually and build you up. So let's continue the study about our mindset and the mind, the right mindset in order to study scripture looking for truth. So it's also important in that sense to understand the other side and that is the people who are uh, uh, not interested in finding truth but are more interested in their own um, situation and to maintain that situation. Okay, so let's turn to the slides. Um, in order um, to go, yeah, I would say this this was the last slide in the of the la the last slide of the previous video. Sorry, and uh, what I want to do today is I want to read some of the scripture verses. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to read all of them, but I want to read some of them and uh, I want to show you some things. And this is just again to confirm what I'm saying all along. That is the truth is right there in front of you. It's in your face and some people do not want to see it and they are looking for something else. That's the point. But OK, let's. Uh, let's switch let's take a look let's switch to the study tool and we're going to 1st Corinthians 15 but starting with verse 21 let's read for since in fact through a man came death through a man also comes the resurrection of the dead. For even as in Adam all are dying, that means no exceptions, in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vivified. I will repeat this one in another way. This is called a perfect parallel. Again, a perfect parallel. That means that there are two key phrases that are put against each other, so to speak. The first one is, even as, and the second one is, thus also. That means in the same way. Again, in the same way way so even as in Adam all without exception are dying in the same way will all in Christ so in Christ will all be vivified that means the same all without exception in Adam all are dying in Christ all shall be vivified. That is the parallel. Okay, we continue. If you want to know the truth, you will hear the truth. Yet each in his own class. It, there is a class. That means not hierarchy. No, it's an order in time. Each in his own class. The first fruit, Christ. He was the first one, and he's still the only one. Thereupon, those who are Christ's in his presence, you can say that, that, that those are believers divided in two separate groups. They will come in first because they will be used by God to be a blessing and to be a conduit of God's grace to the rest of creation that's why that's why God gave them belief first that's all they will serve the rest it's about ministry serving we continue 
Thereafter, the consummation. This, me this means the total end. The accomplishment. Whenever he may be given, he is Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, rather, may be giving up the kingdom to his God and Father. Wait, wait, what? Jesus will not reign forever. You can see here that he will be giving up the kingdom to his God and Father. That means he will not reign forever. And this word forever we will talk about later in this study. And this study will not go for long anymore, but we will talk about in either this video or the next one, something like that. Let's go. Whenever he should be nullifying all sovereignty and all authority and all power. Again, so the consummation will come then after, at the end, the consummation will come. When will it come? Whenever Christ may be giving up the kingdom to his God and Father. Did you read it correctly? Yes. God is not only his Father, but also his God. His God. No Trinity, right? No Trinity. There's only one God. That is God the Father. And he will be giving up the kingdom to his God and Father whenever he should be nullifying all sovereignty and all authority and power. Let's continue. For he, Christ, must be reigning until he should be placing, and he is God in fact, should be placing all Christ's enemies under his feet. The last enemy is being abolished, destroyed, that is death. What death? Is it the first or the second death? That is of course the second death, which is the lake of fire and sulfur. Because in Revelation 20 verse 14, you read that the first death and Hades were, were already thrown in the lake of fire, which is the second death. So the first death was already gone. It was thrown in the second death. So what is the last enemy called death? What is what death? It is, oh, it can only be the second death, of course. Remember, the lake of fire will be abolished. Okay. For he subjects all under his feet. That means God subjects all under the feet of Christ Jesus. Now, whenever he may be saying that all is subject, it is evident that it is outside of him, that's God himself, who subjects all to Christ. You see the point? So that's, of course, God is the only exception. No, whenever all may be subjected to Christ, to him, then the Son, Christ himself, also shall be subjected to him, God, who subjects all to Christ, that so that the end goal is accomplished. And what is that? So that God may be all in everyone, in all. Again, God may be all, everything, in everyone. That will be God's accomplished purpose. Again, that God will be everything in everyone. We cannot fathom that, not even close. But believe it. Believe it. That's the point. So that's the first one. Let's go to Romans 5, verse 18 and 19. Let's read. Consequently then, as it was through one offense for all mankind, for condemnation, again, one offense by whom? By Adam. It was for all mankind, no exceptions, remember, for condemnation. 
there you have it again. Thus also, the same parallel, the same comparison. Thus also it is through one just award by Jesus Christ on the cross for the same all mankind for life's justifying. Again, for the same all mankind all will be justified eventually all all of mankind justified from sins let's continue the same thing in another from another angle for again look at the comparison even as through the disobedience of the one man that's adam the many who is the many that's all people except adam because he's already mentioned so that's all people because no one is accepted from this the many were constituted sinners whom is the many that's all all of us were constituted sinners we know that no exceptions right well it's the same comparison because it says thus also through the obedience of the one that is of course christ the same many the many here the same many here shall be constituted just again same message all mankind shall be justified they will be constituted just all of us no exceptions Please remember and believe it. So let's take a look at 1 Timothy. Two verse five. No, sorry. Uh, two verse four. No, let's start in verse three. For this is ideal and welcome in the sight of whom? our savior and that's not only the savior of the believers as if the believers have have done something special no we have received faith from god <laughs> we have given nothing to god we cannot so it's ideal and welcome in the sight of our savior everyone our savior god here it comes who wills that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth all mankind all mankind and he wills that that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth and trust me it will it will happen of course but don't underestimate this passage because you think oh god only wills it but he cannot do it he cannot make it happen oh really let's take a look at a complementary passage complementary isaiah mm -hmm. isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10 remember says yahweh god the former things from the eon for i am el and there is no other elohim and no other like me listen to this now telling from the beginning the hereafter and from aforetime what has not yet been done saying listen listen all my counsel it shall be confirmed and all my desire shall i what oh yes all my desire shall i do says god and what does the previous passage say, says god wills that all 
So God desires all my desire shall he do. Remember? Well, God wills, he desires that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth. Will he do it? Of course he will do it. Do you believe the truth or not? Do you believe the truth or not? Think about it. We continue. Colossians 1.20 Reconciliation of all. Let's read. And through him to reconcile all to him, making peace through the blood of his cross. That's how all will be reconciled to God. Through him, through Christ, whether those on the earth or those in the heavens, all in the heavens and on earth will be reconciled to God through the blood of the cross, through Christ. Wow. And, it, and the reconciliation will be both vertical and horizontal, as I already mentioned earlier. So, I think we have gone through most of the passages so we will continue to the slide wow and it's already late okay so we now know and we we will go through these last ones maybe uh, later they will be on the slides i remember so again people hope some people hope in the hidden chambers of their hearts that their bastard employer annoying neighbor abusive aunt or bullying colleague will be tormented forever mm -hmm. and these people often unconsciously even look for evidence in scripture of eternal torment is that understandable yes that is understandable of course they have traumas from the past maybe and of course you want to in your um, warped and de uh, well in our let me say it because I'm also human of course so in our warped and degenerated f uh, sense of righteousness we want those bad people punished and punished hard understandable but still it's truth that we would pursue right the truth of god and his unconditional love and grace that is the truth okay so if these people want to find passages about eternal torment in god's word they will seemingly find them yes that's also god's design like i already said multiple times God designed things in such a way that people will be judged. People who were in the relatively wrong spot in God's plan. They will be judged for their own benefit, of course, and advantage in the long term. So this is often the cause. These, fro uh, these, these uh, 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 what is the word? these traumatic experiences of the past and the warped and degenerated sense of justice of people this is often the cause of the misinterpretation of many passages in scripture while these people also maintain the mistranslations how about that because i mean some mistranslations as uh, as an example the word ion the Greek word ion, we will come to that. Those mistranslations were already discussed multiple times, multiple times, and they maintain, the translators maintain these mistranslations. And their heart and their conscience tells them it is not good, it doesn't make sense, something is off, something is not right and they still don't listen they lie to their conscience they betray their heart that's what's happening and they stand therefore in the lie 
you'll see how it works. So they man- maintain mistranslation in all modern translations of scripture and all these church leaders, they also, they, they keep on maintaining this game of mistranslations. Well, they will be judged accordingly. That is according to God's plan. These people will always look for what pleases their hearing and confirms their unrighteous heart because it is unrighteous to want to um, uh, to want to torment bad people without stopping, without ceasing. That is totally unrighteous. It's not possible to punish so-called punish uh, uh, I would say uh, limited sins with an unlimited burning or torment again it is unrighteous to punish limited sins with unlimited torment think about it so to this end they turn away from the truth these people and they maintain the lies so they follow myths and that is in second timothy 4 verse 3 and 4. so i'm going to end the video now we are a little over time but i thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next time see you bye bye